My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 100 and sorry, 259. Page 259, and today is our lesson number 162. This problem that we are about to solve, problem number one, as always, if you're familiar with this concept, if you know the terminologies and all what the thing, different things are called, then of course this is a very simple matter. But if you happen to be one of those people who have forgotten your geometry from high school, you would find it helpful. This, this problem deals with the concept of parallel lines. And before fin before finish before you finish watching this video or after you watch after you finish watching this video, I would like you to watch day number eight and day number eleven. Just type in just type in geometry geometry day 8 or day day 11 along with my name and will pop right up just type in Kishwani and then geometry day 8 and day 11 watch those videos also you will find something useful you will find something beneficial you will learn about parallel lines and you, and you will also and will also solve a couple of problems along with that the problem that, that is given to us here before I actually solve that problem let's talk about the parallel line the basic things that you need to know so that not only you can solve this problem but any problem in the exam that appears dealing with the concept of parallel lines. Here's what happens. When two parallel lines, when two parallel lines are intersected by a third line, intersected means that they're cut. Here is the two parallel lines, here I have two parallel lines, one and two, and this line is intersecting these two parallel lines. Let's call them L, line L and line M. When when two, when two parallel lines are intersected by a third line, three things happen. We get two kinds of angles. We get two kinds of angles. Small ones and large ones. Let's see, let's see if we can recognize uh, which angles are small and large ones. So let's, let's, let's first of all number them here. So let's call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Can you recognize, can you tell me which angles are small ones and which angles are large ones? Just by looking at it, that's, that's what I'm trying to make you understand, that this is something that you can just visually tell which finger is a large one, which finger is a small one. So again, if you have trouble reading here because it's too small, it's one, two, three, four, I'm just going clockwise, and five, six, seven, eight. If you should be able to see that angle three is a small angle, and so is angle one. Angle six is a small one, and so is angle eight. The small angles, small angles are one, three in this picture, six and eight. And the large ones, large one of course are the rest, two, four, five and seven. Two, four, five and seven in this picture. Two, angle two, angle four, five and six. You should be able to tell that these are all large angles. This is a large angle, this is a large angle. Number two. So we get two kinds of angles, the small ones and large ones. Number two. The sum of SU, SUM sum of any small angle, any small angle, and any large angle equals 180. Sum of any small one and any large one. You pick any small angle, any large angle, they will add up to 180. For example, uh, 1, 1 plus 1 plus 5 equals 180. As you can see here, angle 1 is a small angle, angle 5 is a large angle. 1 plus 5 should equal 180. What about what about 2 plus what about 2 plus 6? 2 is a large angle, 2 is a small angle. That's 180. What about uh, 8 plus 8 plus 4? Well, 8 is a small angle, 4 is a large angle, so that's 180. And finally, what about uh, 2 plus 7? 2 plus 7 is 180. 2 plus 7 is 180. Or is it? 2 is a large angle. 7 is also a large angle. That is not 180. That is wrong. 
sum of any any small angle, any large angle is 180. Any small angle. You pick any. There are four small angles, four large angles. You pick any small angle, you pick any large angle, and they will add up to 180. You don't have to worry about it. Finally, this, is, this last part is the most important part. Any angle, any angles, any angles that look equal are, in fact, equal. You don't have to worry, worry about it. If two angles. If two angles look like large angles, then they are equal. This angle to me looks like a large angle. Angle 7 to me looks like a large angle. The 2 must be equal 7. Angle 1 looks like to me like a small angle. Angle 6 looks like to me like a small angle. So 1 and 6 must, equal, must be equal to each other. That's all there is. That's all there is. Now we can solve the problem. Now that we understand this concept, solving the problem is very straightforward. So let's do it here. So one more time, very quickly. One more time, very quickly, when two parallel lines are intersected by third lines, three things happen. We get two kinds of angles, small ones and large ones. Number two, the sum, STM sum, addition of any small angle, any large angle, is 180, as we just saw. Finally, any two angles that look equal are equal. So in this problem here, we are given two lines here. Problem number one, we are given two lines, line L. line L and line M and we are told that this is 42 degrees this to me looks like a small angle this to me looks like a small angle and they're asked uh, uh, and we're being asked what is this guy why which is a large angle and we know that sum of any small angle we just learned it sum of any small angle any large angle is 180 therefore therefore y plus 42 equals 180 Therefore, y must be equal 180 minus 42. 180 minus 40 is 140. I know that. Therefore, 180 minus 42 must be 2 less, 138. Well, that's your y. That's your y. What else do they ask for? And they also ask for s. Uh, sorry, x. I do not know any reason why I would not solve for x in my notes. So let's do x. Now, for the x part, I'm going to erase this part here. Uh, it's in the middle of it. I should have put all of this thing on this side here. Y equals Y plus 42. Y plus 42 equals 180. Therefore, Y equals 138. That implies that that implies that Y must equal 148. Let's let's put the other other line, which is I'm going to put it in a different color here, which is a line that goes something like this. And in this line. We are told that this is 57. Let's make sure I put it right. We are told that this is this is 57. Now, when we talk about small angles and large angles, this this line, red line, has its own sets of small angles and large angles, and this black line here. Let's give them names instead of talking about red line and black line. I'm going to call it. Uh, L1 and L2. So L1 has its own sets of small angles and large angles and L2 has its own sets of small angles and large angles and they have nothing to do with each other. This applies to one given line here. You cannot just take a small angle from there and take a small angle from here and say that they are equal. Those are two different families. So here 50 to 57 degree looks like to me as a small angle. They're asking you how much is X? How much is X? Well X is also a small angle. So X is also 57. That's all. That's all there is. X is a small angle. For this, for this L2, this must be 57 because this guy is 57, so this is 57. That's all it is. We're done. I will see you tomorrow when we will do question number two. Okay? Bye now.